Every now and again, it's a good idea to go back to basics. So today, I'm going to revisit one of the central principles of NLP. The map is not the territory. That phrase is a quote from a book called Science and Sanity, written by Alfred Korzybski in the 1930s. And it's a phrase that's been adopted by the NLP community to express one of the fundamental principles that underpin everything else that flows from NLP. So what it means is that the representation of the world that you have inside your head is just that. It's a representation. It's not actually the real thing. So in other words, the way that people perceive reality is subjective. So the way that I see what's going on around me would be different from somebody sitting beside me. Essentially, it's experiencing the same thing. So I'd like today to focus on how is that a useful thought and how can you use it as you're going about your day-to-day -day activities? I think the most useful aspect of this is to remind yourself that what you're thinking is only one option in a whole range of things that you could be thinking. Or in other words, there's always a different way that you can approach something and think about it. So where this comes from is that in the outside world, there's an awful lot of information available to your senses. The best estimate I've read recently is that there's six billion bits per second worth of information available to your five senses. Now, the research also tells us that the limit of your brain at the conscious level is 134 bits per second. That's a big difference, isn't it? Six billion on the outside, 134 on the inside. So, not surprisingly, what that means is that there's a huge filtering activity going on between the outside world and the inside world. So we ha develop habits in the way that we think about things. We develop habits in the way that we pay attention. We have habits in the way that we filter the information coming into us, which means that quite often we perceive things in a habitual way rather than really paying attention to what's going on. So one way that you can jolt yourself out of your habits, if you're finding that what you're thinking or what you're experiencing is not completely useful or comfortable, one way of jolting yourself out of the habit is just to ask yourself, well, what's another way of experiencing this? What's a different way of looking at it? What's a different way of talking about it? Because, you know, there isn't a one-on-one -on -one relationship between your experience and the words that you use to describe it. There's always a different way that you can talk about something. There's always a different way that you can put it into words. And as soon as you do that, then you get a different sense of what's going on. I know it's an old cliché, but the thing about the glass being half empty or half full is exactly what I'm talking about here. Because when you switch the words, you get a different experience of what's going on. So, as you're going around your normal day-to-day -day activities today, this week, this month, I'd like to challenge you. When something irritates you, or upsets you, or bores you, just stop for a moment and say, OK, so, how could I describe this in a different way? Now, describing it in a different way may not make it more interesting. It may not make you less angry to start with. But if you keep looking for different ways, eventually you'll hit on something that gives you a totally different experience of what's going on. Let me give you an example of that. Suppose you've got somebody who's late for a meeting. <clears throat> well, you could sit there and you could get annoyed with the fact that they're late for a meeting. You could drum your fingers on the table, you could huff and puff, you could roll your eyes around a bit, you know, and sometimes there's a certain amount of satisfaction to be gained from doing those sorts of things. <laughs> but ultimately, it's a bit of a waste of your time, isn't it? So how else could you approach this? So you're waiting for someone to come to a meeting and they haven't turned up. So what do you do? How do you explain it to yourself? Do you say to yourself, oh, they're late again? Do you say, oh, it's really disrespectful? Do you say, perhaps they're not coming at all? Or do you say to yourself, well, that gives me a few minutes to gather my thoughts so that I can make an even better job of this meeting I'm about to have. You see what I mean? Totally different way of thinking about it, isn't it? And you have a choice. The trick is remembering that you have a choice and then exercising that choice. So, as I said, as you go around your activities today, this week, keep challenging yourself. Ask yourself the question, is there a different way of describing this? Let me know how you get on.